you can see that he had win, draw, draw, win, draw, 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 win, win, draw, win. Eight and a half points, no losses. And I believe he was the only one who had no losses. Even Arthur Bisguire, the tournament winner, had a loss against Steinmeier. So that's quite a remarkable uh, result for sure. This game was played Ju July 20th, 1956. 57th U.S. Open, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Brian Owens, a national master, playing against the young Bobby Fischer. Brian Owens was not only a national master, he was the winner of uh, the 1965 Golden Knights Postal Championship. And he started the game with D4. And, of course, the Indian game. And after C4, of course, the King's Indian defense. In those days, uh, Bobby was playing the King's Indian attack as white and the King's Indian defense as black. He had not yet adopted the mantra, Pawn to King 4, best by test. Knight to C3 and Bishop to G7 is the normal variation. Pawn to G3 and Kingside Castles. Bishop G2, now Pawn to D6. A position I've found myself in on numerous occasions. Knight f3 is the Yugoslav system. Now, Queen's Knight to d7 is the Debrecen defense. Debrecen is the capital of Hungary's northern Great Plains region. Now, castles. E5. E4 brings us to the classical main line. Pawn takes pawn. Knight takes pawn. Knight C5. And Owens is the first to depart from the ECO with rook E1. The book move is H3. I will show you the book line with rook e8, then rook e1. a5, queen c2, pawn c6, bishop e3, pawn a4, queen's rook to d1. And then the most common continuation is king's knight to d7 from whence it will place and transfer to b6 that is the most common line and the book line owens opting for rook e1 bobby goes with a5 Well, now h3. So you'll see some of the same moves anyway by transposition because now rook e8. And it's interesting that um, the book icon does not appear here because isn't that just a transposition to the line that I showed? Oh. The line that I showed does include rook e1, doesn't it? Let me think. Yeah. I showed h3, rook e8, rook e1, a5. We had a5, h3, rook e8. So that should, I don't know why that doesn't put a book icon up because that transposes to the same tabia. If we go here, compared to here, it's the same. 
It's just different. Anyway, bishop g5 is played here, so that makes it irrelevant anyway, because in that other line, bishop e3 was the move. h6 hits that bishop. He comes back to f4. Now the king's knight does come to d7. And he may very well be coming to b6 or even perhaps e5. Now bishop e3. So a few wasted moves with this bishop. From g5 to f4 to e3. Bobby with c6. Very common idea. Not appreciated by the bot, but the point is to put a blunt on the diagonal against this bishop. Queen d2 is played. Now knight e5. And he's yet to get the bishop out, but the position is equal. And this queen's bishop often remains latent for quite some time in these kinds of openings. Now here queen e2 was played to defend this pawn that came under fire. But pawn to b3 is a better way to defend that pawn. Bobby with a4. f5 being the more convincing approach, apparently. Queen's rook to d1, queen a5, and he is threatening to push here and undermine the defense of this knight. Pawn f4 hitting the knight, the knight drops back to d7. And king h2 was played here. Queen c2 and white stays safe, but and I'm not sure if this was a mechanical move. You do see this move quite a bit. But not really necessary at this juncture. The predicted A3 comes to pl play and puts the question to this pawn. And now Queen C2 is played. The bot calling for knight b3. I thought maybe bishop f2 would be a way to also keep the fight alive and get some support up the center, although the bot calls that inaccurate. Queen c2, pawn takes pawn. Queen takes pawn, knight b6. Putting the seaman in danger. Owens defends with his bishop. But now knight on b6 comes to a4. Hitting the queen. That gets a thumbs up. And um, the bot preferring bishop e6. Now, do not play. You say, oh, I've got a super attack here. I'm going to take the pawn. That would be a mistake. Because after knight takes knight, bishop, uh, rook takes knight, queen g2. Well, the eval bar says it's not so bad after all, but you still have a, a smidge. A splinter of an advantage here. But you'd have to bring your rook back for sure. Okay, come back. Knight B to A4 was the move. The knight takes the knight. And the queen takes the knight. Battery attacking the A-man. So, yeah, again, you don't want to play the knight takes the knight. And you have the same transfer over here. 
queen takes the knight is the better idea. He's still going to play queen g2 in either case, isn't he? Now, I'm surprised to see rook takes the pawn here. I was expecting knight takes the pawn. And the bot concurs. The way to clearly stay on top is knight takes the pawn. And then bishop to d7 is coming next to connect the rooks. And if he plays something like bishop g1 to discover a super attack on the knight, then queen takes the pawn, will pin the queen to the king, and that's quite a move. But Bobby with rook takes the pawn. Knight to b3. And he retreated his rook back to e8 here. The bot preferring e7 for the rook. Uh, you don't want to take this pawn at this juncture. Because after, and that gets a blunder from the bot, after knight takes uh, the knight, that's going to compel pawn takes the knight. And that allows rook to d8 check. And of course, after king h7, then the rook can just go back and hit our queen. And we've got a little bit of trouble here. He may even just play rook hits queen right from the get-go. Uh, you might be able to, let me think, can I give up two, the, my queen for two rooks? Well, if I take the bishop, I get an exclam. If he takes my queen and I take his queen, he has to make a decision whether to take the rook. Oh, that's what he can do. He can just give back the material. Take the rook. I take the queen. Check. Oh, wait. I thought he was going to come out and fork me here but it's check so he's got to get out of check he's got to get out of check why is the eval bar dead equal when i've got an extra bitch oh i gave up a rook my mistake sorry guys sorry i forgot that i'd given up a rook from the get-go yeah it he's up the exchange for a bishop and two pawns so it's dead equal Um, anyway, we we are not going down that path. Um, we're not going down that path, and we're not going to play knight takes the knight either. Now, not because he can take our rook either. That would actually not be his best bet. He should just take here. We'll come back to queen takes rook. He should just take here. Well, actually, forget queen. I, I'll just pin his queen, won't I? And if rook d2, then I have a similar outcome to the line I just showed. I can, I, I can rook takes the bishop. What if he rook takes the rook? First of all, if if he rook takes the queen, it's the same as... It's the same as the other line that I showed. But it's pretty much the same thing either way. It's just different, right? Well, the bot says rook takes the queen is the best route. Okay. Um, but none of those are optimal. The best thing was... 
Well, I didn't mind rookie eight, but I, I rookie seven makes a good point. It gives yourself a little bit more flexibility in case you need to transfer this rook or even bring this one over here. Bobby with rookie eight. Knight takes the knight, pawn takes the knight, bishop takes the pawn. Bishop e6, super attacking the C man. So we have the A man under battery and the C man under super attack. And we have this bishop ready to swoop into C3 to boot. Rook b1, and Bobby went with bishop c4 here. With rook b1, you may wonder, you may, you may rather do something about this attack. And I think the only thing that makes sense is to use your king's rook to defend it. But Bobby went ahead and took the pawn. Well, the bot says queen a6 to defend the pawn. I, I don't mind trying my rook. Let's see what the bot says. It's an alternate star. Well, my point is in using the rook is now he's got rook takes rook check, and that's what he played, and that gets an X glam. Rook takes rook, rook b4 is a nice move. Wrong is to take the pawn. In spite of the fact that it was left undefended, and I I'm just seeing this because a bishop takes the bishop, queen takes the bishop, queen to c2 check, forking the king and the bishop, and then you lose your bishop. And black has a, a full bishop advantage. But rook b4 is a gorgeous move, isn't it? Hits the queen and super attacks the bishop. Interferes with the queen's defense of the bishop. Bobby with a very nifty technique counterattacks. Bishop takes bishop. You take my queen, I'll take yours. He did, and he did. King took the bishop, and now we have rook bishop against rook bishop, black with one pawn advantage, and it is a passed pawn. Rook e2 check, king f3, rook c2, rook a8 check, king h7, Bishop e3, pawn b5. Pot calling for bishop f6. Uh, I'm not real clear why bishop f6. I mean, functionally, b5 makes sense. I suppose rook b2 should also be considered. Let's see what it gets. Oh, I guess not. <laughs> Uh, B5 it is. Rook A7. King back to G8. Rook A8 check. Now Bishop F8. And that's not a good idea to move into a pin. And that gets a question mark. King H7 definitely safer. But then you have to concede to a repetition, and um, I think Bobby still is hoping to make good on his past pawn. 
But moving into this pin only gives um, white some opportunities for counterplay. And I think it increases white's hopes of not only holding, but perhaps getting an advantage. He is down a pawn. F5. G5. You do not want to take this pawn. Because the point of f5 was to discover an attack on h6. It was not to put the question to the pawn. And so if you take the pawn, you allow bishop takes pawn attacking the pinned bishop, and that white just wins after this. You've got nothing left. So g5 blunts this bishop, and then f6, and suddenly white is well compensated for the extra pawn. And Bobby's um, insistence on pushing has actually cost him here, and this is very common. When we have an advantage, we want to push that advantage, and sometimes to our own detriment, we see a repetition coming, and so we try to avoid the repetition, and we go from being in the advantage to being hopeful that we'll hold. Rook c3 was tried here. Pawn b4 looks interesting here as well. Let's see what b4 gets. A star. But bishop, and then um, king e4, and it doesn't really matter which way he goes. King e2 should work also. Let's see. Oh, no, apparently not. The main point is to get out of the pin. Although you do want to activate and centralize your king, so yeah, I, I suppose. Rook c4, king f5. Rook c3, king back to e4. And probably should keep the pressure and just bring his rook over to e8 and defend. Yeah, that's what the bot says. Bring the rook over here. But rook back to c4 check. King d3. And white offered a draw. In a position that I would consider to contain still quite a bit of play. I think he was probably a bit relieved because he certainly felt at a disadvantage. And that's another common malady, a psychological malady in tournament chess in particular. You feel yourself behind and you finally get some relief. And sometimes you might even have a small advantage. Like the eval bar is indicating that um, white now has a small advantage. But you get that relief. And so you're more than happy to offer a draw when now you might actually have some winning chances. Well, I mean, I suppose Bobby could play rook a4 here. And in order to maintain the pin on the bishop, Owens has to play on the 8th somewhere. Let's say rook c8, getting, uh, okay, or rook b8. And then, of course, we have check and king e4, and another check, and then king f5. Rook c4 here to defend. Yeah, I guess White probably felt like he was would be trying to squeeze blood out of a turnip. Maybe Rook B8. Then I'll hit your bishop, and so on. The king would have to come back, etc. If I play B4, and you play G4, 
Another rook c4 check, perhaps. Thumbs up. Or maybe rook c2, perhaps. Rook c2. Not rook c4 was the right way. In any case, uh, the game was drawn. <laughs> 